What's up guys? Welcome to today's video where I'm switching things up. And by switching things up, I mean by location. Fish on! That's a toe, brother. Golly! So guys, before I jump into today's spinnerbait video, I gotta thank the folks at Shimano for making this video possible. Guys, I depend on Shimano's reliable reels and rods to basically stand up to the abuse that I put them through. As a kayak angler, I have to have dependable gear. As somebody who travels and fishes in remote locations, I gotta have stuff that's gonna stand up to the abuse that I put it through, and Shimano fits the bill every time I head out on the road. So do me a favor, check out the extensive lineup of quality products from the folks at Shimano. And now let's talk about some spinnerbait adjustments. So the bait that I ended up switching to in this video was the Strike King Burner. And the reason that I went to the burner is because it has these thinner blades that allow me to reel it a lot faster. And I needed to go to a little bit heavier head. And so this half ounce uh, kind of wedged head really allows this thing to be reeled pretty fast and not turn on its side. And speed is really what I needed because I needed the bait to be moving faster so that the fish didn't get as good a look at it. So I needed a combination of a little bit more weight. I wanted that skirt to be popped out so that when I put the trailer on there to give it more appeal, that the blades didn't counteract that and make it rotate on its side or the, the trailer, I'm sorry, didn't counteract that. So the two baits that I ended up catching fish on is when it was sunny, I would go with the gold blade. And when it was overcast, I would go with the two nickel blades. Both of these basically being the same bait. You know, I started out with a colored blade, which I normally do uh, anytime that I've got overcast and a slick surface. But when I realized that the rain was kind of disturbing the surface, made the adjustment, as you'll see in the video, the whole point is do not overlook spinner baits as a great post-spawn tactic and something that you can use all the way through the summer. So I had to take some time off to get my mind right, but I got my mind right. I got some things taken care of. And uh, so I decided to get back on the road. I met up with the folks from Monster Bass up here in Minnesota. So right now I'm in Minnesota, the upper end of the Mississippi River. We're gonna try to catch some bass. I'm gonna bring you guys some tips, but I'm back on the hunt for the Catch 22 Challenge, which is to catch 22 fish in 22 states. I got nine down so far. I got a bunch more to go. So here we go, Catch 22, Minnesota. All right guys, so we got some rain. We got some overcast, we got some post-spawn fish. So I'm gonna start with a white spinner bait with a uh, woo, with a uh, little skinny trailer on it so I can burn it pretty good. Got a double willow blade because I want to fish it a little faster and I don't want the bait to roll on its side. Um, and I think that these fish are gonna be out here kind of off of the outer edge. So that's where we're gonna start. If the sun comes out, we get a little bit, you know, more activity up shallow, then I'll move up shallow and we'll do that whole thing. Uh, maybe throw a frog, and actually I might do that here in a bit, but right now, I think these fish that are out here on this outer edge of that shallow pocket and up against that really thick water uh, will be ready to chew. Did I say thick water? I meant thick cover. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. All right, guys, so one of the things I'm going to do a better job of in the future is when I make adjustments after an initial, um, you know, assessment of the circumstances that leads to catching fish, I'm going to share that with you. So I started off throwing a white spinnerbait blade because of the overcast and because the surface of the water was slicked out, and usually that white gets a better contrast to those fish that are looking up. What I realized was is after I got three or four follows, the fish were getting too good a look at that white blade because the surface was being disturbed by the, the, pet, the raindrops that were dropping. So once you break that surface, uh, a silver blade does a lot better, even when it's overcast. But I also felt like that the bait was moving too slow. And because I chose a 3 8 ounce bait, I wanted to upgrade. And so what I wanted to do is go to something that I could reel faster. I wanted to go to a silver or a nickel blade in this case. So I tied on a Strike King burner spinner bait and I put a little swim bait body on it, but I jumped up to the half ounce because I wanted a little bit more weight, a little bit smaller blade, and the combination of those two allowed me to reel the bait a lot faster, cover a lot more water, but more importantly, it presented to the fish something that they couldn't get as good a look at, which forced them 
to eat the bait. So these little adjustments, I'm gonna start bringing you in the future. So let's take a look at how the Strike King burner does after I made an adjustment. What's that? So after making about a dozen or so casts, I decided to put my sunglasses on so I could see the cover better and hit the pockets or put the bait a little bit closer to the weed edges and grass. And then I decided to stand up to improve my vantage point. Now, unfortunately, I didn't adjust the camera angle. And so I'm not gonna show you guys two or three casts where the camera's looking directly at my crotch. So what I'm gonna do is just cut right here to right, the guys. first fish I caught and uh, the spinnerbait the adjustment day. worked. Look at that dude right there. So that'll work. We have got a fish on a spinnerbait out here around these spawning bluegill, which is cool. All right guys, that's fish number one from Minnesota. We only got 21 more to go. Well, when you come up north, you gotta expect to catch some toothy cryptas. That is a very, very pretty pike. Pretty dude right there. I'm not gonna measure him because I've already got a pike on the board, but man, what a pretty fish. You know, and if you live up here and you live around those fish, they, I know they become a nuisance. I know if I fish for a couple of weeks, but when you first get back up north and you don't have these fish, they're fun, especially right out of the gate. Time to get another bass. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, oh, there we go, here we go. All right, guys. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty, oh, Lord, come on. Please. Get over it. Oh, it's not a monster, but he thought he was. Oh, let me get this joker in the boat. Right there. Shoot, I didn't get it on the back camera. That's number two. Let me get this guy measured, photographed, back in the water. You wanna release? Yeah, I'm on, just like I'm out here. Number two, man. It's a little guy, but it's gonna count for my catch 22. Let's find out how big, let's find out how big this little guy is. It's always funny when we say, how big is it for a small fish? It's like asking a small, a short person how tall they are. Well, they're not. <laughs> how tall are you? I'm not. I mean, I am, so I guess I can get away with making a short joke. Again, this is a small fish, but when you gotta catch 22 and you got crazy conditions you're always running into, you know better than to throw away measurable fish. Wrap up with that one or no? Nah. All right, guys. So after catching this fish, this little dude did not want to put his tail down on the board. So it took me a little bit longer than normal to measure that fish. And as you can see here, I'm actually talking to the producer from Monster Bass. I think that's number four. We're getting there, boys and girls. We're getting there. Oh, 
Oh, you bastard. About to do the old fish it upside down thing. Put your rod tip down about three foot in the water, and then you can burn it because it doesn't create any lift at all. And it also water loads, so the hook sets like almost automatic. There's literally a like a an a presentation you could do better from the kayak than you can from a boat. I'm sure there's more than one. There's a lot, but I mean, this is one of those ones that I do for chatter baits, spinner baits, swim baits, all that, and it works like a champ. Lipless crank fishing, straight down. You're the best around. You know what's funny is like, I know that song, but I don't know any other words. You know the Karate Kid song, You're the Best? Yeah. You're the best. Around. You just sing the first part and then hum. It's just like um the Rocky theme, you know, Eye of the Tiger. Like I know like Eye of the Tiger is the thrill of the fight. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know. Uh, uh. Ah, the tiger. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, I don't know. So you guys asked for more soundtrack in my videos, so there you go. Ah, the tiger and Karate Kid, science and theory. On paper. On paper. On paper. Problem is, most bass don't have a house, so therefore they don't get the paper. They know what they're supposed to do. They don't always do it. That's especially true because big bass are females. See what, you see what I'm saying? You see the parallel?